superstars. Guys, this is such a special episode for me. Not only are we giving 500 spots away, but I also give you a sneak peek into actually what our live study sessions look like. And we teach you how to get a good canter transition, how to make your tra canter transition from okay to epic to even to water flying change later. And it's live, it's unscripted, it's real, it's from a real study session. So you really get to see what it's all about as well. So get in there guys, remember this video, you're gonna get 500 people get free live sessions with me and you get to see a real live, live coaching session all about how to make your candid transition not only work, but also better. Let's get into it. So last week, guys, you might have seen on a little little girl's channel called Harlow and Popcorn. She has this massive, massive reach. She's this young girl. And we just thought, we need to inspire people. So we gave 500 memberships to her people. Um, and I've got to say, we were surprised. It filled up within a few hours. It was just insane. It's absolutely, totally chock-a-block. And we thought, okay, that's one thing. But then you all, they all turned up to the live coaching as well and we've already helped people like there's before and afters within the first couple of days really really helping people like look at this little white pony here that's from one live coaching session and we just thought this is ridiculous we need to help more now obviously it's not as simple as i can just give you the free things it costs money it costs money to run the um, website it costs money to register you I physically do it. it. It costs money. So we wanted to give more than 500, but we really thought that that was going to be our cap for the next six months, really. But thank you to everybody. I went in and I spoke to my team. We spoke to our current members. We've even had members buy another membership, just a token extra membership, to give us enough funding to be able to give out another 500 to you YouTube viewers and also another 500 to people who don't know us. How cool is that? Okay, so there's a link below guys. There is only 500 and if it's anything like the Harlow views, it will just go like that. But please, if you need help, if you love our videos and you really, really, really wanna learn, please click on the link below, register. And for 30 days, we are online minimum of 40 hours a week where you can click a link and we are there like right there and you can talk to us okay so click on that link get in there there is no catch there is no credit card details this is pure philanthropy I know that we can change the sport with what we do I know we can I've seen it over and over and over and I want to help people I want to help people. Anyone that's done 30 days with us, at the very, very least, goes and tells the world about it. And you know what my goal is? A million subscribers, a thousand more people in my actual program, because when I get to that point, I can give horses away. Not just have my FEI, people come and ride my FEI horses like this one. We've got Harriet here on my Grand Prix one. We've got Sigurd to here on a small tour horse. We've got Ash riding the same one. I've got two people booked in again coming up for that. I wanna do more than that, I actually wanna give them to you. And this is how I can grow. The product is so good, we can help people so much, we just want to help you. So please guys, register below, get into it, and you'll just, you, your whole world will just be changed. And I can't wait to share that with you. Not only are we giving 500 spots away, but I also give you a sneak peek into actually what our live study sessions look like. And we teach you how to get a good canter transition, how to make your tra canter transition from okay to epic to even to water flying change later. And it's live, it's unscripted, it's real, it's from a real study session. So you really get to see what it's all about as well. So get in there guys, remember this video, you're gonna get 500 people get free live sessions with me and you get to see a real live, live coaching session all about how to make your candid transition not only work, but also better. Let's get into it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at Suzanne. So does everyone know Suzanne's video? Um, she's from Queensland. Everyone know Suzanne? 
I think most of us do. So a couple of things I want to show you is first of all, where she's at with her test. So Suzanne's got here. Can you guys see that screen? Yeah. Yeah? So you see here, she's got a 74 at her preparatory C, which is pretty amazing. She's got 10%. And you've got seven, 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 seven and seven, 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 seven and a half, eight, six and a half. It's just absolutely epic. And so what she's got to get now is that throughness and that straightness and that correctness in the way that she goes also for um, the canter as well. So if you see here, a beautiful combination. Look at, I love judges handwriting. Zoom in and have a look at this. Wait, I'll take this for a second. <laughs> look at the judges handwriting. It's always so hard to read. But let's see if I can decode it. Here we go. So a beautiful combination and a balanced, accurate test have to develop the fundamentals of the, oh, has, oh, sorry, has developed the fundamentals of the levels ready to go up to the next level. So that is 100% what you want to hear from a judge. You are ready to go up to the next level. So what she needs help with, and she sent it to me today, is she needs help to get the canter as good as the trot, okay? So let's have a look at that now, guys. Put you all where we can see it. Okay, so what we've got here is she's work showing us how she's trying to get that canter transition better. And you see in the trot, it looks okay. She's stepping up, she's fairly rhythmical, but it's very clear here when she starts to do the canter transition. So I'm gonna go back and forward in this like 15 second bracket to show you guys what we need to change. And this isn't just for Suzanne, I think this will be relevant for all of you. So again, watch her go. Now you'll notice when she goes from trot to trying the canter, the horse's uprightness, it starts to fall to the inside like this. Can you see that? His quarters swing out. Watch it again when it comes around the corner. His quarters swing out and the whole horse's body tries, starts to do this a little bit. So you watch that. You watch how it, see it comes up. Can you guys see that? Even for like a step, her legs, the horse's legs even cross over in the hind. Do you see that? Yeah? yeah? So have a look and see where all the weight is. So all the weight is on that inside front leg. Can you see that? So you see how the angle of the horse is like that. Yeah? So if you drew a line there, where's my pen? If you drew a line then you want the horse to be upright like this, but actually the line of the angle is like that. Yeah? So that's matched to the horse like that, yeah? Maybe come in here for me, Carl, and just show that. So there's the horse, and then that's the line. So he's on this front leg here. He needs to be upright like that. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, guys, so does that make sense to you? So if you imagine you're trying to get your horse to canter and his outside hind leg is the leg that has all the weight in it, you could get that. Your outside leg is the leg that needs all the weight so that he can push off into canter. But when you're trying, you're on that front leg and he's leaning right over. Everyone can kind of see that now? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So, what, so that's why there's no canter, yeah? And we've got to try to change that. So let's keep playing and then see what happens. So we keep watching what's going on here because that's her first attempt as well. You don't know if she's realised that actually and then goes to fix it, which it looks like she has because you notice she hasn't got it and then she's continued and kept trying and, and got the trot better and then tried again. And that was better. So you see there, so I think, Suzanne, you're on the right track. When she couldn't find it, she's gone back, made the trot better. And then you see the rhythm change here where she almost gets it. It's gonna come around in a second. Here it comes. You see the rhythm change? That there was almost canter. But again, if you have a look, 
Have a look at the angle again. Do you guys see that? Where's all the yeah, weight? Yeah. It's on that leg there. Yeah? yeah? Does that make sense? Maybe come back here again for a sec, Carl, and have a look again. So all your weight is again on that leg and you see the tilt. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you guys can see that? Yeah. yeah. Right. So now we get to solve it. This is the exciting bit, okay? So when you're riding along, we feel like we want to do circles and circles and circles all the time. But what circles do, guys, is circles is A, a constant suppling exercise. B, it's very hard to measure. So you can, you can go sideways a little bit, yeah, and not know actually. Whereas when you're on a wall, it's very, very clear if you've made that mistake. Does that make a little bit of sense? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So what yeah, Suzanne yeah. has done here is actually really good because she does get the canter. She gets there in the end. Okay, she gets the idea. When it wasn't working, she went, oh, no, my, I'm, not, I'm not balanced. I'm going to try again. And she did the right things, but we can make it even better again for her okay yeah. so what you need to do Suzanne is go along the wall so you can see even here when she's on the wall she's not on the wall so you want to ride along the wall so that you've got a real measurable line that you know that not one leg is falling or one leg's not falling and that you can feel your train tracks that the front two front legs are in line with the two hind legs. Two front legs in line with the two hind legs. Let me take it off the chair so I can see all your lovely faces. Once you feel like you've got that softness, you then turn a 10 to 15 metre circle, but you turn it with a little bit of counter bend or a counter flexion even. And the reason for that is that so you can make sure that when you turn the circle, the horse doesn't start to fall to the inside. So if you do a trot circle with a little bit of counter bend, it puts weight on the outside hind leg, which is what you're going to need for your canter, and make sure that he's supple enough that you can turn that circle without him starting to fall. Okay? So Suzanne, that's what you need to do first is get back on your wall, go back to your basic stuff. You know you've got that because your dressage test says so, but go back to that basic stuff, ride the wall. Then do your 10 to 15 metre circle, but as you turn, use the counter bend. One circle point to point. So when I say point to point, it means you leave at a point from the wall and you return at the same point. Then you go straight line again. And you just go around the arena and keep attempting those one circles point to point. When you can do that with the counterflexion or bend, either either, which whatever you can do, and the rhythm doesn't change, the horse doesn't go Wah! and wobble, and he stays on his circle, then you know it's almost time to try canter. Okay? We then add one more piece. When you feel like you've got that good, you're going to turn, have that counter um, flexion or bend, whichever is better for you. You're going to turn the circle. After the first quarter of the circle, you go up a gear. So you make the trot bigger, but not by more leg by bringing him along with your rise. So you bring him along with a bigger lift and you think I'm taking him along with me and I make those steps bigger. When you do that, he might go back to again, oh, I can't do that and counter bend and, and, and. So he might lose his balance again and the circle might go like this again. That's okay. That's just your next point and you stay there and you keep repeating that process point to point until that's good. Then, when you can do that over and over and over, you then add the canter, okay? So once you can do that, you'll go back up the wall, you'll again turn to the 15 meter circle, 
the first couple of steps of the turn, you make in a counter bend. So it reminds him to stay on that leg. Mate, go up a gear with your trot, but this time a little bit bigger than before so that he almost is a little bit, almost losing the rhythm. It's a little bit too big. And in the moment when the hind leg comes underneath, we ask the, we ask the horse to canter. And the aid is this, outside leg behind the girth, not hold. So you don't put the outside leg behind the girth and then hold it there. You put the outside leg behind the girth and in the moment when the outside hind's just about to hit the ground, you go canter and that's it. Inside rein can a little bit prop up the shoulder so you can think, keep it nice and close to the shoulder so he doesn't do this. And it's an instant, boom. If you miss that moment and it doesn't work, don't try again. Go back to your counter bent, find the trot, make the trot a little bigger and then repeat. Yeah? Am I with you all? You with me all now? Take yourselves off mute and give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's right. Hell yeah. Right. Okay. So you're with me there. <laughs> so rules. Always, always, always the train tracks. Always. Even on the circle, train track rule. Never, ever, ever more than one circle point to point at a time. Never. Yeah. And in the beginning, in this instance, when she's cantering, as soon as we get to the wall, we go back to trot again. So that the canter doesn't just stay going round and round and more on the forehand, more on the forehand, more on the forehand. That's how we get it good. And then to make it better, you do exactly the same exercise more frequently. So at one point, you might get your canter, yay! You get to the wall, you go back to trot, then it might take you another five rounds of the arena to get him in a place again where it's time to canter. Your goal is, is that you can get that exercise every letter. So you can turn a circle, go to canter, hit the wall, trot, go 12 metres, turn a circle, canter, hit the wall, trot, go 12 metres. Can we do Big Brain Explode? <laughs> Let's make Meigs do it. Wait, let me pin Meigs. Guys on YouTube, come here. I'm going to pin Megs. This is Megs. Megs is our other study group coordinator. Megsy, do the Brain Explode. Go on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, guys. Questions. Okay, so if on your 15 metre circle, um, when you're trying the counter bend and then upping the trot, yeah. and you don't get that canter strike off, but by the time you hit the point back on the wall, yep. you just go straight again, you don't do another circle. Yes, exactly. 100% exactly. Megs, you can take yours off mute too, lovely. Yeah, exactly. So if you miss that moment, you've missed that moment. Yeah. is what it comes down to. So you've got one chance as that outside hind leg comes in and hits the ground. That's your moment to say canter. And if you don't get it, it's because his alignment wasn't quite right. Does that make sense? So say if I was doing that circle at A yeah. and I didn't get it, mm -hmm. so I'd go back going around, so would I then try it at F? You try it next circle, or would I keep going around the arena? You try it when you've got balance. Okay. Does that make sense? So you don't try it again until you've got balance. And that okay. might be a long way away, sure. It might be that you have to go another 10 arenas tomorrow. <laughs> even but if you don't have balance you can't canter well 
I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You tell them you're preaching to the choir here. Yeah. <laughs> but did that help? Yes. Yeah. That's and, brilliant. And remember, so. that video, she, it was only, how long ago was it, Megs, that she started? Six months ago, less? Um, no, definitely no more than six months. And it was so bad. She was in such a bad place that she thought she couldn't ride him, had to send her away maybe, or maybe even give up. And she's gone from that to 74% in a real test, not our, you know, we paid the judge ones, <laughs> in a real one. Um, it's amazing. She actually got higher than she with our online comps. Anybody else have a clarity question? Michelle had a good one about how you know when the outside hind leg is about to hit the ground. Ah, Meg, do you want to answer that one? I think you articulate that better than I do. Oh, there's Moogs. <laughs> Whoever asked the Moogs, Moogs is in the background now. We he'll, can't see him. He'll come around in a sec. Yeah, you answer that question, Megsy. So you know because you're not going to do any sitting trot. So you're going to stay in your rising trot up and down and you know because of when you're up and down where the horse's legs are. So it's as you go down in your rise, as you're going down in your rise, and some people, I guess if you depend on your rising trot going up or down, but as you're going down, that's when the outside hind leg's about to hit the ground. Easy, eh? And that's why we don't sit because when you sit, it's harder to control and it's more of a momentum push them into canter versus a button, a bomb, a bomb, a bomb. So what we're actually teaching you to teach them is how to make the canter aid like you would a flying change aid or a tempi change aid later. Because ultimately, all a flying change is, is a walk to canter aid. It's the same. And then all a tempi change is, is, do, is how quickly they get their rhythm between the changes. That's all it is. And then, and then counting. Counting's hard. And little things with counting, you think four tempies would be easier than three tempies, but actually it's against the rhythm because the canter has three beats. So three is easy to count to, four you get confused. Um, yeah, what, um, some people do one tempies really, really well. I do two tempies really well because it makes sense to me. One, I get, I get stuck, I get confused. I always do more than I'm supposed to. Um, but it's only about the rhythm in between. So if you guys learn now how to do the aid for canter correctly, it doesn't mean that she still cantered today. You still got there. But if you do it really correctly, like an Olympic Grand Prix rider now, then a flying change, a tempi change later, walk to canter, all super, super, super easy. Right? It's cool, hey? Any other questions? What would you do for a horse that's like a little bit behind the leg so that like one kind of sharp canter wouldn't quite be enough? That's, big, that's where making the trot bigger to the point where it loses its rhythm ever so slightly, uh, that okay, solves yeah. that part. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. No, that's okay. And that's why we do it because... If they lose their rhythm a little bit, you have more influence. I see him. I see Mowgli. You see Mowgli? Should we say have a quick hello to him, guys, before we before we head off? Wait, we'll just yeah. let's see if we can get this window open. Here we go. Hi, Mokes. Hi, Mokes. <laughs> oh, do you guys want to see Toby's face? Yeah, Toby. Come up here, Tobes. <laughs> and YouTube viewers, this is what we get to do. You get to know us properly. This is, there we go. That's Carl. You get to know us properly. It's really fun. All right. So Toby, as a little present, is going into Mayfair twice a week to get a facial. <laughs> what are you 
What are you going to do to him? For a whole month, he gets to go into Mayfair twice a week for a facial. He's in a clinical trial that I knew someone and I got him in. That's my gift for him. Some people get bonuses. Some people get flowers. He gets he gets gold. It's 24 karat gold facial. <laughs> but no beard. he had to shave for it. Hi, Moxley. Oh, I don't even recognise him. Exactly. Oh, my God. He looks so different. <laughs> How good does Moki look, though, guys? He looks great, doesn't he? Super. And where Moggs is at at the beautiful. moment is he's... He looks beautiful. He's grown probably a hand. Can he's, I ask something? Yeah, sure? yeah, yeah. Is that where um, when you film the Harlow video where you give the giveaway? Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, same property. Yes. Ah. Yeah, and then when she rode G, it was at her place. Ah, Popcorn's beautiful, isn't he? Yeah. That a lovely? He looks great, yeah. Popcorn's beautiful. So there you go, guys. So did that help you with that canter transition? You got that nailed. Yeah? And I think we all need to bravo, bravo Suzanne because Suzanne's done awesome. All right, well, I'll let you get back with Meg Z. Thank you so much. You'll all be on YouTube. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I've got a quick question. Can I just ask a quick question? Sure, go for it. Um, I'm wondering, it appears that um, straightness is of a high priority. Mm -hmm. Um because we're always wanting to stay on the train track. Mm -hmm. Yet I find it interesting that it's so far up the training scale. Ah, now that is a brilliant question, which is probably a whole other topic, but I can't not. Yes. Um, okay. So you're right. Straightness in the training scale is a different type of straightness. Okay. So straightness in the training scale is uprightness so it's if you were looking above him that you could that his backbone would be right in the middle and there would be exactly the same amount of flesh I suppose on either side okay the straightness okay. that we're talking about is more that his feet are in line that it's a, a train yeah, track so to speak and that in itself makes them more upright but the straightness is where so even when they do a pre-St. George pirouette, okay, if you could imagine pre-St. George pirouette, they, they collect a little bit and then they turn a pirouette. But when they do it, their bodies are still a little semi in travers, a little bit. So they're, they're not 100% sitting. They're, they've got their body shorter because their hind legs are a little bit in. Not obvious. It's very, it's, it's invisible. It's like their rib cage is a little bit smaller. And then they turn the pirouette. In Grand Prix, when they do the, the pirouette from the centre line, they do this. And they literally turn a piro from here versus turning a piro from there a little bit. They go like that. And the same with Piaf. That's what Piaf is. They literally walk small and then sit. But to do that, they've got to be super upright in their, in their whole body. So they almost feel taller. And that's why it's at right at the end of the training scale because right. it's an uprightness. It's not easy crooked. Yes. Okay. Does that matter? And that is very confusing. Straightness probably isn't a great word. They probably should have used upright. Yes, okay. And then the straightness. And because that's very advanced. That's why it's later. That's why it's that's why it's the end. So so um, contact. Uh, so impulsion plus straightness equals yes. collection. Right. So when you see them at pre St George level, etc., it's collected. So it's heading that way, but collection is ultimately the PF where they just sit and keep moving. Right, okay. So then the train tracks that we talk about all the time, that is actually not really dressage. That's a base that you need to do dressage. Right. That's an element of control that you need to have to be able to, yeah. your horse needs to be able to walk, 
and trot and canter off your leg that you can put your leg on and they go. Yes. And you need to be able to move the shoulder, which means that you can steer them. Yes. Then at that point, you can start dressage. Right. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, absolutely. And so when we talk about the train tracks and the straightness, it's about reminding people to keep doing that when you're doing suppling exercises, when you're trying to canter, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, okay. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes, thank you, Alicia. Excellent. All right, amazing. Okay, so I may as well even wrap this up here. So let me gallery it again. So, guys... That's a study group. That's what you all get to come into for a month. These guys are amazing to even let us do it. So say thank you, thank you, thank you. One thing, guys, I'm going to randomly choose you. What's one thing that you could say to everybody to help them understand what this gives you? Um, Nairi. Friendship. Friendship. When we're, we're nice. <laughs> Megs, what do you think? Don't forget, now Megan teaches it, but Megan made, made it from zero to pre-St. George through this. Megs, what would you say? I want to say um, a systematic approach. A systematic approach. There you go. There you understand. Um, Fee, what would you say? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> One thing. <laughs> Confidence. Confidence. Yeah? Um, Bettina's quite new. What would you say? Um, I would say it's Benita, but it's okay. Oh, sorry. Um, it's okay. So, um, the unpacking of information, so discussions. Yeah. It's a safe place to ask questions. You know, yes. nobody doesn't get it right because they're not getting it right. They get it right because they don't, don't get it right because they don't understand. And you need to ask questions to be able to understand, yes. you know. Um, Carol, what about you? Uh, mine originally was confidence, but um, Fiona got that one. But I, to me, it's knowledge. Knowledge. The knowledge gives me the confidence. Yeah. And it's fun, guys. Dressage is supposed to be fun fun we're not curing cancer here we're riding horses i mean really that's the reality of it let's not take you and you can you got to take it seriously because it's expensive it's dangerous sometimes but you can take it serious and still be fun you know you don't have to be so miserable are we ever miserable no, no. <laughs> and also we're not blowing smoke up your bum so to speak either we tell you the truth but we do it in a way that you can still enjoy yourself and get somewhere yeah yeah all right yeah. say bye to everybody bye <laughs> thanks so much guys that was good i hope you learned something too Bye, guys.